I can't believe this. I should. <laughs> it is live now. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. All right. Sorry, guys. Wow. I've been just talking for 45 minutes and I was wondering why there wasn't anybody in the chat. And it was because it didn't say go live on this. So sorry. <laughs> I guess I'll do that all over again. 320. I guess if you guys were waiting to, to get in here, sorry. Uh, technical difficulties, my own stupidity here. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> Anyways, we'll get we'll get back into this because I had a lot of great uh, topics on this on the grouting, and uh, so uh, boy, I just can't believe I just talking for forty five minutes to myself here. So I just figured it was Saturday and everybody was in the in the something else and they didn't have time to to get on here today. And I just realized that uh, my thing was not going live. So, anyways, thanks for joining me today. I know that it was a big uh, frustrating thing. You just uh, I just went through there, but. Uh, Thanks for joining me. Give me a like on this video when you come on in here. Uh, and today, if we're going to get into our part eight of our towel shower course. So this is going to be all about grouting. Um, I was just talking 45 minutes about grouting. So we'll, we'll reintroduce the whole topic here. Uh, but I'm going to go into a lot of the pros and cons of different types of grouts, why I like one over the other, and what you should be considering or, or thinking about when you're getting into to grouting. And... Uh, you know, I'm going to go through each one. So, uh, again, this is uh, basically all about bathroom modeling. Uh, thanks so much, Gene. Thanks for coming in here. I, knew, I should have known if you weren't going to be in the chat that it, I wasn't on at the right time here. So, thanks for joining me today. So, I'm going to get into grouting. Gene, I don't know what kind of grout you're planning on doing with your shower. You might be getting close to that process. But I'm going to go into the pros and cons. I think I might have been talking to you about Spectralock 1. And that is definitely one of the grouts that I uh, have really been happy with over the um, last couple of years uh, and I really think it's really one of my go-to's so but so first off go into the description hey finished floors good to see you um, go into the description of this video because you'll be able to get the guide that we're going to go through so the guide on curbed showers and in that guide so let me just pull it up here so this guide that, that you're able to get completely free, I'm not charging anything for this. Now, if you buy some of the links and different things through this, definitely helps me out because uh, it's affiliated through Amazon. And, you know, but again, do your own research on that. It's, a lot of times you're not always getting the best price on Amazon. You're better to go to your distributor. And um, there's a lot of reasons to go to a distributor, especially if you're a contractor. You kind of you're probably better off to go through a distributor and have a contact there that can. Um, help you out if you ever had an issue with any of these products but one way or the other if you're buying it even if you're buying it off of amazon you're probably you know these bigger companies that are selling these grouts will take care of you um you know if it, if it is their fault or if they have some kind of problem um, but anyways in the curbed guide shower systems uh, i basically highlight an overview of basically the common size bathrooms and the common ways of going about it and including a bunch of things you need to think about when if you're replacing a tub and putting in a walk-in shower you know everybody wants a really large shower they want to get the biggest shower they can get but you have to pay attention to the center of your toilet location to where it is to your tub so there, there are some minimum distances you have to think about when it comes to where your fixtures are so for a toilet minimum code is usually 15 inches I personally feel like that's still too cramped. You really want to be about 17 to 18 inches. ADA wants you to have 18 inches. So just pay attention to that. I know everybody wants a big shower, but if, if, if your bathroom just isn't big enough, you really want to try to keep that space. So at least keep it down to 15 inches. But I have you know diagrams in here to kind of show you some of the different common ways that most bathrooms are configured and be able to help guide you through on um, you know strategies of doing a walk-in shower again if you're doing this for an elderly person i know um, if your parents are getting older they're thinking about getting rid of that tub putting in a walk-in shower uh, you know i would just advise making sure you have 18 inches on the other side of that toilet just because if it is for someone elderly you want to be able to have all the equipment that they need to do um, you know like some of those um, 
you know, helpful chair things that you can get on. You want to have some room there so you can modify things later on if things get more difficult. Uh, so 18, inch, 18 inches is usually what ADA wants for it. You want to have some clear space in front of your shower and obviously your, your vanity. But hey, you know, your bathroom is your bathroom and you can't uh, sometimes modify it. But these are just some things to consider when you're actually doing them is to uh, try to stay within these distances. So in this guide, I really highlight, I'm not going to go through everything because this would take hours to go through because there, it's, it is a very detailed guide that goes through some of the pros and cons of the, the ways of going about waterproofing. One thing that you probably will never find on my channel is a rubber liner type of system. Now, I'll be doing some mud beds, don't get me wrong. I think mud beds are great, and I think there's um, a lot of great guys out there uh, showing their methods that make it a lot easier doing mud beds. Mud beds make a lot of sense when you can't get these materials. It makes a lot of sense for basements. It makes a lot of basement or uh, sense for areas that uh, are uncommon in size. Mud beds are definitely a way to go. It's just usually a lot more time consuming and it's gonna take you most of the time longer to get to the tiling process. And if you're a contractor, you know, time is money. But uh, you know, typically when you get a pre-slope base or whatnot, they, you know, they're they're it's more expensive. So it kind of weighs each other out. But I think if you're a younger contractor in this field, you want to do as many bathrooms as possible, get as many clients as possible. So the faster you are at getting something finished, I think you're better off. Especially in some of these situations where people only have one bathroom and they're relying on it. Um, they will definitely be giving your name out and say, hey, I had this guy do my bathroom. He was out in two weeks. You know, I, I, it was so great. I've heard, I always heard my neighbors always talking about three months uh, to get a bathroom done. So I'd highly recommend this guy. And so if you go with some of these different methods, um, you know, obviously Schluter, Weedy are the big players. Um, but there's a lot of different systems out there that are worthwhile. But there's also a lot of situations where a mud. Now, I don't see any situation where a rubber liner makes sense. Uh, I just don't see any point in having water saturating the mud bed. Um, so, you know, I can immediately go into every portion of this guide and just keep talking because I have a lot of uh, passionate thoughts about different things. But I guess what I'm stating is if you're doing a mud bed, get a bonding flange type of shower receptacle so that you can do waterproofing right directly underneath of the tile. You're not saturating saturating that mud bed. And you're not relying on wee pulls for the, the um around a regular traditional drain to, to drain, and you're gonna eliminate a lot of possible issues in the future. Um, but I go through the pros and cons of these different types of methods. You know, expense is always one of them for sure, but you know, these preformed bases, you know, in some ways, it just makes a lot of sense to be able to do. If you're just doing a standard shower, three by five, or taking out your tub and putting in a shower, you know, one of the cheaper, you know, one of the most affordable ways uh, to go is is the Schluter system. Um, they really kind of have it down to a certain price point. That's kind of hard to say no to, uh, you know, especially if you're doing the membranes over drywall type of system. But I'm not getting into all the different systems when it comes to that. But just know that in this guide, it kind of highlights all the different systems. Shower faucets. Uh, you'll just you, if you were on my YouTube channel, you saw today that I did, did the Hans Grohe Eye Box, one of my favorite shower valves. And um, I hopefully I demonstrated that well enough for you why I like it. It's just like if you don't want to get into soldering, um, one of these high uh, Hans Grohe boxes are great. And, it, you know, you, you could buy one of these and, and um, have a whole bunch of selections on different trims and different ways to go about doing things. Another one I really like is the, the, uh, the Grohe. This is a American Standard company, uh, Hans Gro or um, Grohe Growflex. This is kind of has a similar uh, mechanism as the uh, Hans Grohe and uh, they have a lot of great systems as well so I definitely um, you know a couple of these systems I definitely recommend I got all the links down in here for you too along with all the different types of materials that are or products or um, tools to use definitely get a tubing cutter for PEX it's really helpful to get nice straight cuts so a thin set I go into some of my favorite thin sets and why I like them um, you if you were on this channel you know that I really like using Ardex products. If you're a beginner tiler, Ardex is definitely going to be the way to go because it's going to last the longest in the bucket. Um, Ardex X5 is probably my go-to for thin sets, and that's including walls and floors. Uh, it's kind of my everything um, type of thin set, and it'll last, you know, in my experience, at least three hours in that bucket. So if you're a beginner needing that time to cut those tiles and get them placed, definitely way to go. Uh, 
and then I go over general rules and and patterns or different concepts about setting tile. Um, you know, if you're doing a bathroom, you're going to need multiple size trowels. There's nothing. There's no other way around it. Uh, so if you're doing larger format tile, you're going to need a bigger trowel for that. If you're doing um, a mosaic on your shower floor, you're probably going to need a different size trowel for that as well. So I go into that. One of the biggest, um, I think, in the last 10 years that has really been super helpful are these leveling clip systems. So if you're doing 12 by 24s or plank tile, you know, these leveling systems, even though that they do spend, take a little additional time to set up and it does cost a little bit more money to do, you're going to get a better installation at the end of the day you're gonna have less lippage and it's gonna look a lot better horseshoe spacers this is something i only started you know i only found about eight years ago and ever since i found them i never used another pair or uh, used any of those rubber spacers ever again horseshoe spacers definitely way to go um you know it's definitely worthwhile here i gotta flick that over so you can see it so these horseshoe spacers definitely a way to go um and then I have all the helpful different tools and all the videos that you see in here, uh, basically highlighting the, the uh, products and the, and the stuff that I use there. So grouting. Okay, so this is what I just went over for 45 minutes. Let's see if I could do it a little bit less time frame than that. But I was just, you know, I'm really passionate about grouting because this is the final step of your uh, tile installation. You spend all that time putting everything together. You did all the waterproofing. You did all the tile work. And the grouting is the last step don't screw this part up because you can. And I've seen bad grout, uh, you know, grouting problems. And it's just, boy, it, it's really sad to see the deflating of the person who's had a problem with grouting. Um, and a lot of that has to do with timing. A lot of that can do with um, just not, um, you know, following the instructions of what the, the grouts are saying. Um, so we're gonna go through kind of the four different types of grouts and it starts out with a traditional grout that's what i started out with never really had any other choice for that matter i mean i did have other choices i should say 15 years ago i've been doing bathroom remodeling for 15 years uh specifically been a contractor for 22 but bathrooms that i've been focusing on 15 years when i first started out I had no idea what i was doing I had very limited ability to find out what i was doing that's what's so great about youtube that's why i'm part of this that's why i want to teach that's why i want to be involved with this not only am i improving by the feedback of all you guys uh commenting all the other contractors that i see out there but you know it's just great to be able to pass on you know years of experience and then also get that feedback as well and then everyone improves it's a win-win all the way around so it's uh, so thanks so much for all the people that are subscribed to this channel. I really appreciate it. It's great to see it growing. Uh, again, I don't know if I even said it. Please give me a like on this video. It helps out that, that algorithm. Um, but as far as um, grouts go, so the traditional grouts, there's not too many circumstances that I even recommend or th consider using a traditional grout. Uh, number one reason is because it needs sealed. It needs maintenance. And no one likes to do that. Like I said, I've been doing it for 15 years. I don't know one client that even calls me back to seal their, their tile or seal their grout. Um, it just doesn't happen. You know, sealing is um, not a very difficult thing to do. It's just that you hit the shower has to be dry, then you seal it, and then you have to wait 24 hours and sometimes 48 hours before you can use the shower again. And no one seems to do that, especially if it's a shower that somebody uses all the time. So going through the... the um, so first off, let's just show you what a traditional grout um, is. This would be your normal big box store type of grouts. So let me pull this up here. Uh, so yeah, so poly blend. This is a pretty typical grout that you would get from your big box stores. It even says eighth inch to half inch grout joints. Don't know who would be using half inch grout joints. But anyways, you can see the price is very, very attractive. 20 bucks. It's all you need, um, but you have the sanded version, and then you have the unsanded version. Uh, sanded, sanded, sanded. I don't think I even have that underneath it here. So let's go um, poly blend, poly blend, unsanded, unsanded, unsanded grout. So um, the unsanded is yeah. So this would be the unsanded version. So you can get two versions of it, uh, but you can only go up to one eighth inch joints on the unsanded grouts. So keep that in mind. Um, but 
really the pros of uh, a, a traditional grout is it's inexpensive. You just saw that 20 bucks. You could probably do your whole shower with 20 bucks. That's very appealing to a lot of people, but, um, and it's also readily available at the box stores. They're still selling all this stuff. Now they have, you know, I've seen a lot of depots and lows and different places starting to carry a lot of these pre-mixes and high performance grouts that we're going to get into. Um, uh, but for the most part, they still do carry mostly a traditional type of grout. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's fine probably for a foyer room or for a kitchen or, um, you know, something, I, I don't know. I wouldn't personally use it anywhere in my home. Um, uh, just because again, it needs to be sealed and no one likes to do that. Um, so I don't know. I'd, I'd say the only way that I would use a traditional grout is if I needed the unsanded grout. Um, cause that really is the, the safest grout for sensitive stones. So when it comes to, you know, um, like a really high pour gloss marble or porcelain, well, not even porcelain, it'd be more of like your stones, your really, really high gloss polished stones. They, you know, a lot of these different grouts can scratch that very easily depending on what it's, you know, what kind of marble it is and what kind of stone it is. So, and then there's other, other types of, uh, intricate mosaics that have like really, really fine, um, grooves and things in them that a regular grout can be very difficult to, to, to get out of those grooves. So an unsanded grout would be a great way to go about using it. So unsanded is probably the only type of grout, um, that's traditional that I would even consider using the sanded uh, to me it doesn't make any sense because of the ceiling aspect of it um but what let's go through the pros first and we'll get into the cons i'm going to just keep talking badly about uh traditional grounds um so another pro is that it has a long setting pot life so you do have plenty of time to get all those joints packed for sure i mean you can grout your entire shower outside floor you could be waiting 25 minutes before you clean it off and you'll be fine. So you're usually there isn't too many situations where anybody's behind a traditional grout. You have plenty of time to remove that. So that's a big, that's a big bonus. Depends on, I mean, if you're doing, I don't know if you're doing a restaurant floor and it's like 3000 square feet, maybe that is, maybe that, that, that probably is the best way to go because then you're not going to be at behind the curve on it. Um, it's very fluid very easy it doesn't really take a lot of effort to pack the joints that's that's kind of a nice thing and then again the unsanded grout is great for polished marble stone or any other sensitive uh, type of tile that you're installing cement tile that you know cement some of these cement tiles can be very sensitive too so using an unsanded for that might make sense again you're still going to have to seal it in the future so cons require sealing no one wants to do it no one ever does do it it ends up getting stained and then you have an issue now, the biggest uh, con that I don't like about it, not the biggest, but one of my pet peeves about it, uh, traditional grouts, is it absorbs water. You turn on that shower and you immediately see the, the grout joints darken. I can't, I always, it really bothered me uh, to see that. Maybe that's because I was always trying to get a finished picture on that final day. And as soon as I turned on the shower, I, had to, I, had to, I would have to wait for that grout to actually dry out so that everything looked good. Uh, but in my mind, if the grout is absorbing water like that, then how is it not going to absorb different stains, different issues, different things? Um, so I, um, that was just one of my pet peeves. I always liked the grout to look the way it was. As soon as I installed it, that's the way I want it to look. Um, sanded grout, unbelievably gritty. Anything that's gritty. These are one of another one of the things about the grouts that I'm using. I'm very sensitive to the grittiness of it because I've been finding out years later that people can't seem to get their grout cleaned because they're either not cleaning it enough or it's just the fact that it's gritty and it's just allowing soap scum to get in there um, and they're not they're not able to get it back so whether it's stain resistant or not doesn't really matter if it's gritty and it's holding on the dirt then you're still seeing the dirt so um, sanded grout is definitely some of this um, the uh, the most grittiest type of grout that's out there it's obviously sanded so uh, it's one one big um thing that's not great about traditional grouts color consistency bag to bag can differ in a lot i've had those issues back in the past as well you mix one bag and the next bag and you know one frustrating thing about traditional grouts and i remember being that with clients i would go to grout and they'd be like i don't know if i like that color i'm like well you have to wait until it dries and then you can actually see what it looks like 
And that was always tough because once it dried and they didn't like it, what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to really scrape it all out and redo it. So it was always something that um, was kind of a, not a confrontation, but just like people were on edge about because they weren't there to say, well, that's not the grouse that I chose. Like my mind looked much lighter or much better than that. And you wouldn't be able to tell until a couple hours later once everything dried and then you got to see what it looked like so i didn't like that a fact about it that's where these premixes epoxy as soon as you go to set it in that's exactly the way it's going to look that's the way it's going to look when you turn the shower on that's just the way it's you know it's going to be you know really um it is what it is so uh color consistency bag to bag is not always that great especially in that custom um <laughs> poly blend definitely had issues maybe they've gotten better maybe they got better i have honestly haven't used the stuff in at least 10 years so they might have gotten better with the consistency but I would be concerned about it if I was in a big living room where I was doing all tile. I probably wouldn't use that stuff because I'd be afraid that there might be a difference in color. Uh, the other part is that it's prone to cracking and shrinking. Um, it is a Portland-based type of cementitious grout, so it doesn't really have any flexibility that these urethanes or epoxy has. So it's not going to resist cracking very well. Uh, so you can have issues with that. So especially in the hotter, colder climates, you know, that expansion contraction all the time, um, you know, you can end up having that happen through your grout joints, uh, especially around corners and stuff. Now you should be always uh, caulking your corners. So, you know, that, that movement joints, you can't really get away with whatever, any type of grout that you use. But, um, you know, it, it is nicer to have a premix or an epoxy because it does have a little elasticity to it and, and, and makes it better. Um, and then haze that comes back that could be problematic and irritating uh, you know I know that that was you know you clean it off before you left for the day and then in the next morning is completely hazed over and I mean there are haze removers and stuff but there are some tiles that it just keeps coming back and it's you know, like you just can't seem to get it back you get that haze off of there some of that the dusty haze that comes on to it and a lot of that has to do with not pre-sealing the tile that you're installing as well so you have to be cautious about that we're going to be getting into that as well when we get into um into my course on the on the grouting so uh, the haze is, is a problem on any grout but um with the traditional grouts it was kind of a a, a longer process you know especially if you're just doing a tile floor in a bathroom you know it's nice to be able to use these premixes because you could just finish the customer sees what it looks like it is what it is and you usually don't have any issues with haze later on and you can get paid and walk off you know walk away whereas sometimes when you're doing the traditional grouts you might have to come back to make sure that everything is is done properly all right so the next one would be high performance grouts so this is um no i'm not i don't know all the chemical makeup of it i mean i'd love to go to Mapes and, and Laticrete's thing again and get a little bit more education on the science that they have into this. But from what I understand, the high performance grouts are basically um, something that hardens so well that it's become stain resistant. So the molecules are, are hardened. I don't know whether it's cementitious. I really, like I said, I don't really know the chemical makeup of it. I just know the high performances. And what, what I mean by that would be uh, Mape. So like this would be an example of it. So MAPE FA would be considered a high performance grout. And as you can see here, it says replacement for sanded and unsanded grouts. So this would be your all, you know, one fits all. It'd be 16th inch joints or bigger. Uh, most of the time, you're not going less than 16th inch grout joints anyway. So that shouldn't really be a problem. Um, but uh, the FA would be considered one of those that does not need to be sealed. Now, the one thing I will say about these high performance grouts, so this would be one. And then the other one that I really um, am a big fan of is the Laticrete Permacolor. What's interesting about this one, though, too, is that this is the base layer. So you could get one bag. Say if you're doing two colors like we're doing in the shower that I'm doing right now or that I'm going to be demonstrating here in my course. Say if you're doing uh, two colors, you could buy one bag of base and then buy two packet colors. So you could split it into two different, um, so you could split that base and then use one color for the, the walls and one color for the floor, whatever that's gonna be. I think that that's, it's affordable. It's a very affordable way to go. You got 11 bucks for the color packet. Now that's Amazon, you probably get cheaper somewhere else. Um, and then you're talking about 30 bucks. Well, that's a 25 pound bag. That's probably more likely what you would buy is a 25 pound bag. So you got 50 bucks there. So you would have $70 in, 
into a two-toned bathroom. So you'd have the outside, say if you wanted the outside floor or something, and then you wanted the, the shower wall or something, you can just buy one bag of the base, split it in half, and do the separate packets. I think that's a really awesome benefit. Uh, that's definitely something I've done in the past uh, on flips and, you know, wherever you can save a little bit of money uh, is great. But, I, you know, knowing that I had a great, a good high performance grout that never needed to be sealed was also a real benefit, too. So going through these benefits. Um, all right. So sorry, I've been kind of ignoring my chat here. Hey, Josh, happy Easter. Best lessons learned from once the hard way. That's definitely true. Uh, but uh, you, I definitely prefer mud bed. I don't really trust foam. That route is so ugly. I don't like it at all. What do you think about the Mapay FA? FA, yeah. So we're getting into that right now. Um, finished floors. So, um, but yeah. Um, so the pros on high performance. It's inexpensive. So roughly, um, you could probably do a whole shower and your outside floor with 50 bucks worth of grout. Um, it doesn't need sealed. Obviously, biggest bonus of it all. Um, and, that, and again, that's why I don't go with the traditional grouts. I see no point in buying uh, grouts that need to be sealed or have any type of maintenance like that. Um, pros is that it's fast setting. So the, the high performance ones are going to be kind of a rapid setting type of grout. And that's where you have to be careful uh, as well. So, you know, this Bay FA, I really do like this grout. But if it's hot and it's dry and you have sun coming into your bathroom, I would be I'd be cautious. I'd be cautious with this because it can flash on you. And once it's once it's like hardened um, on the tile, you can't really uh, smooth out the joints. Well, you can't really I mean, you could scrub it off. You'll be able to use a white scrubby pad and get it off. But you're gonna have a hard time making those joints. So it can it can flash on you and then be really difficult to remove. So it is sensitive here in Pittsburgh. We're always humid. Uh, so I don't really ever have that problem. Most of the homes I'm in are air conditioned and that's 70 degrees. Um, but I would be I would be cautious on a warm day that's dry and you have sunlight. I would be careful with the FA. I'd be careful with the, the permalock, um, the, the permacolor as well because it is a rapid setting. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying that it is a time sensitive thing. You definitely don't want to be adding this this grout going to lunch and then coming back and trying to clean this. It's just not going to work for you. But it does give you plenty of time. In my most most bathrooms that I've done it with, you know, you have a good solid 15 minutes after you set all the grout to be able to remove it. And it, it really does clean up very nicely and easily just like all the premixes. But again, you just have to be careful on those really hot uh, you know, dry days because it can flash on you. So that's one, um, one big con on the, the high performance, but those cons are going to be the same with the premixes and the epoxy. The, if those things set up, uh, they can be very difficult too. But in my experience, the high performance ones, once those flashed, it was, you know, it was really tough to make those joints look good. Um, and that, you know, some so. So I guess what I would be recommending if you're in a hot climate, I would just wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you're in a hot, dry climate and you don't have air conditioning or something like that, I'd probably just steer away from the high performance. I would spend the extra money on the premixes in that, in that scenario. But for the most part, it does, um, you know, you usually do get about 20 minutes before you can remove it. Um, but I do like the FA, definitely works, you know, works well. Uh, you can use it on the 16th inch joints, so it's replacing that uh, unsanded, sanded grout deal. And it is a fine aggregate, so it, it, it's a very fine joint. And so you won't have any, you shouldn't have any too much trouble with, you know, cleaning that surface. So I really, both the Permalock or per, uh, Permacolor and the FA are very fine. And I think that's, in a lot of ways, for me these days, that's like one of the most important qualities of the grout. How textured is it is if it, is it really gritty everyone's going to have a hard time cleaning it um doesn't matter what it doesn't matter where the area is whether it's the foyer in your in your home or it's the the bathroom i mean it's it's definitely you know the grittier it is the harder it is that's going to keep it cleaned whether it's stain resistant or not so um after tiling okay so gene after tiling the shower floor can i use silicone in the quarter inch gap between the floor edges and the walls. Yes, Gene, definitely. You definitely want to uh, caulk that. I would wait until after the grout obviously cures and you're done uh, having any water and having everything dried out. But um, yeah, you can get the matching caulk. If you're using a spatula lock, I would definitely use the lattice sill 
grout or um, lattice sill. Lattice, yeah, I think that's the lattice. Uh, lattice sill. Yeah, so the lattice sill, lattice sill, that's what it is. It's a weird name. But the uh, premium uh, lattice sill, lattice lattice sill. So this would be the stuff. So whatever color you have it in, this is a hundred percent silicone version. Um, I really like the Laticrete uh, grouts and the uh, caulking. Uh, the one I really, you know, a few other contractors are on here that have used Mape silicone. I find I hate this stuff. This stuff is just absolutely awful. I never had a good experience with it. And, you know, sometimes I buy because I either use Mape CQ. Or whatnot, but a Mapasil T, I just, oh man, it's just horrible. I can never get the joints to look right. It's kind of, kind of, it's not very fluid. It's fluid, I should say, but it doesn't, you know, even when I use Windex or whatever to spray over, it doesn't do a good job. So I, I really try to stick with the Laticrete silicones. Um, so, okay, cons with the high performance. This is another pet, again, the pet peeve of mine is that it's going to absorb water. So you turn on the shower faucet, you're going to see it kind of absorb into the grout joints and going to be darkened and it has to, you know, you have to dry out before it looks the way that you want it to look or the way that you uh, envision that towel work to be. So not a huge deal, but to me, again, if, if water's absorbing into it like that, that means that, I mean, in some form or another, I feel like you're going to be able to absorb um, other stains and soaps and different things into it as well. Um, and then, uh, it can come sometimes set up way too fast. And these are going to be on, if you have a lot of daylight and sunlight coming into your bathroom, there's hot, um, dry days. It's, if it's 70 degrees and you got relative normal humidity, you shouldn't have a problem. I'm just being, I'm just being cautious because I have definitely fought it before and I was very upset with, uh, the, my, the outcome. I ended up having to scrape down a lot of my joints and, and reapply because you, once it hardens too fast, then you can't you can't uh, you can't tool the joint and make it look nice and smooth again. It just becomes a problem. You're just basically racing to try to get it off of there. So, um, and then it requires mixing. So this is just uh, human error. If you're adding too much water to it, you're going to get a, a, a different consistency. Um, so anytime that you're, it's up to you to add water to something, um, you could uh, kind of screw up the mix and it may not work as effectively as you like. All right, so premixes. This is all the the new um, stuff that's out there these days. Uh, you're you're starting to see the box stores uh, get behind this and carry this stuff. And I, you know, I like I said, I've been really really pleased with the uh, Special Lock One. This is uh, something that I've been using on a lot of jobs. I just have not used the bright white yet uh, for the jobs because I'm still kind of old school into that epoxy mentality uh, where, you know, epoxy, the original epoxy uh, Spectralock, you know, it's it's what commercial kitchens used. It's like I, I have a, a lot of a great experience with it and I've always been able to get things back to white. Um, I do find that the regular epoxy is a little bit of a finer consistency, the Spectralock one, but when it comes to Spectralock one, I would say the consistency of this is about the same as the FA or the high performance. Um, it's not as much as unsanded grout. You're not going to really get that. Um, unsanded grout is, you know, I can't wait until a manufacturer comes out with an unsanded premix that is, uh, you know, stain resistant and all of these things wrapped into that because then that would be, that could be the ultimate type of grout for sensitive stones and different things like that. Maybe it's already out there and I'm just not aware of it. But, um, you know, again, I think that the consistency of the grout is a real big issue when it comes for people cleaning it. I don't care whether it says it's stain resistant or not. It's about whether you can actually clean it and get it back to that look and keeping that shower looking like you just, it was like it was brand new. Another popular one is Mape CQ. Now I have turned against this over the years because of the grittiness of this. Now I have not seen past clients bathrooms where they've had issues. I was even talking to Sal de Blasi a couple of weeks ago and he was stating that he did this in his own shower and it looks beautiful and he he loves it i just don't like it i just find it to be way too gritty this is in this in my mind the grittiness of this cq is worse than quartz lock so the quartz lock is which is bostic so let's see 
Quartz Lock 2 is something I used to use all the time. So now they have they named it um, Bostic True Color. It's basically the same thing. So you could see, you know, they're pretty much the same product. But for pretty much exclusively for eight years, I probably pretty pretty much used this uh, the Quartz Lock 2. And, um, you know, I thought it was the greatest thing to slice bread. bread. It definitely, um, you know, I love the fact that it didn't get discolored when you turn on the shower but it was gritty and i found that when people especially in the white color you know i would get callbacks to do another bathroom and i would go up and see the shower and see how things held up and anybody that used the white quartz lock you know there was either orange film that they had a trouble getting off of it or they had soap scum or they had um, sometimes there would be even mold in the corners uh, but I, i'm pretty sure that the orange stuff is also a form of mold as well and you just couldn't get it cleaned out it didn't matter what you used to be able to clean it it would not get back to white so and that was probably about seven or eight years ago that i actually saw um, some of the white grout that i've done on showers and i just never used it again after that i mean i used it for gray here and there but i really started backing away from quartz lock just because of the grittiness and seeing how difficult it was for some people to clean and then i just started using white epoxy straight up epoxy for the showers from then on on out and especially when it came to white i should say and you know those showers are still like i just installed them so i really um you know i'm, I'm really still sensitive about the white grout but that's where my experience with these gritty grouts kind of come through and why i'm, I'm passionate about going with a fine consistency so you know the, really the the two most popular ones right now are spectralock one and Mape CQ, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other ones that are out there that are big box stores. I just don't have a lot of um, a huge amount of um, experience with, especially custom products. That seems to be a Home Depot thing. You, everything is custom, um, that manufacturer custom, and I, I really don't like most of what they sell, unfortunately. Um, you know, I don't like, I don't really like Red Guard. I don't really like their Versa Bond. I really don't like their uh, Poly Blend grouts. <laughs> so the list goes on there's not much that i like about it it's just they're not they're very they're kind of cheap they don't they, you know the, the thin sets kind of flash really quickly they don't have a lot of non-sag quality to it so i have legitimate reasons why i don't like it it's not like i'm picking on them i just uh i just would not have much faith with some of their other premixes as well i can't imagine it being all that great if this is the rest of the rest of it works so uh what's the difference between arctic sponges and sponges that you get the big box store um you know, Ardex sponges, you know, I wish I knew exactly why they work better. <laughs> you know, and it's not, it's not really, uh, you know, like, a, I mean, they are expensive. I, and I can understand why people don't want to buy them. I guess it's the square nature of them allows you to tool the joint better. But when I buy any of those cheaper sponges at home depot or other places it seems like they gunk up very quickly and then i can't get the grout out of them when i wring them out whereas the ardex i know that most showers i can have three of these on hand um and that's more than enough sponges for the whole job including the outside floor and clean up throughout the whole process so i'm not 100 percent sure i mean i don't even understand why they're so freaking expensive i mean 12 dollars for a sponge is quite a bit but it's the only thing i use because compared to anything else like you know my pay uh with their cq would come with a sponge throw it out i don't like it i just they, they just don't work very well they don't clean they seem to gunk up really quickly whereas this with the epoxy and everything else it just works a lot better so that, that's the best answer i can give you i don't really know the technical reason why they're better they just they just work better um and i don't have as much trouble wringing them out and having a nice clean sponge with them so um so what's me uh, epoxy is where it's at it's much easier to use than 20 years ago yeah no no doubt that's we're going to get into the the epoxy for sure when we get into um my course here and that's what i always try to state is just don't be afraid of epoxy it is really actually fairly easy in a lot of ways can be easier than even a traditional grout you have a little bit more you can use a lot more water with it and not worry about the uh, the, the joints uh, running out. So premixes. Okay, so here, let's go through the pros. 
doesn't need sealing. Obviously, my number one reason, that's the reason I don't want to use a traditional grout. No sense in doing, um, you know, getting a grout that needs to be sealed. It's fast setting. So this is great because you get the immediate reward and you get your shower is all nice and done and you can move on your shower trim and everything else. So typically most premixes, you only have about five minutes. So you spread about an arm's width of area and then you go over it with a very lightly damp sponge to remove the excess. So you're kind of doing it as you go. And again, against the other problems I used to have with traditional grouts is that you don't have to wait to see what the color looks like. It is what it is. As soon as you put it on, that's the way it's gonna look. But you also get that immediate satisfaction of having that, that joint and everything looking good in the shower. So. That's a really great thing about premixes. It's very, they're typically fairly fluid. The, the, the Spectralock one is probably a little bit thicker than most other premixes. So it does take a little bit more elbow grease to get it packed. Uh, CQ is actually really easy to, to spread. I think that's why so many people like it because it's really easy to use. It flows really easily. Um, one thing about CQ too though, is it's very sensitive to water. If you have any water, now any 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 grout joint in a shower floor or a, an outside floor that you have any standing water in, it's going to get end up getting ruined. Uh, your joint is not going to form where there's water, so that is a problem. But it's it's even more sensitive with CQ. You'll get pinholes. You have to go back over it, um, especially if you have any water in any of those joints. Whereas the the Spectralock one. You know, it's fairly thick consistency, um, but again, you can't have excess water anywhere or it's going to be a problem. That's definitely one of the um, the cons to it. Um, and they can be used in 16th inch jo joints or larger. So kind of the same concept as the high performance grouts has a fine aggregate. Spectralock one is probably the finest uh, premixes that I know of. So it kind of has that epoxy texture where it's very fine. Nothing is as good as the unsanded, but uh, it's it's getting pretty close and then the color consistency is phenomenal so one bucket the other never had a single issue you know even if i ran out and i had to do the floor later i order another bucket same thing just worked totally fine cons super expensive no question about it probably the most expensive whitmail uh, epoxy probably is more expensive uh yeah epoxy probably still is the winner on that um, now this is amazon so take it with a grain of salt it's 110 bucks probably get it at your local supplier at uh you know contractor price at 85 or 90 bucks something like that so but it's still three times as much as all the other grouts or even the high performances so that could be really expensive so if you're doing like a huge kitchen floor or a huge living room maybe it's not cost effective to do a premix and that that's totally understandable other cons and this goes with any grout is hazing you know some of these um high gloss porcelain tiles if you uh it, they can haze can be stuck on there and hard to get off i used to have a lot of problems with quartz lock too with that um, but i have a lot of methods here i'm going to be sharing with you uh, oh, just hit the button there uh, i'm going to be sharing with a lot of methods here with you on how to eliminate having hazing issues with with uh, the premixes and the epoxy and it kind of goes with any type of uh grout for that matter so um you know, going through the techniques that I'm going to show you is definitely the way um, will help avoid that. But that's kind of a con on any type of system, you know, having that haze issue. But sometimes some things are more sensitive than others, especially when it comes with the high gloss type of tiles. Um, and then the other con is very sensitive to water. Premixes are very sensitive to it. You have to have a very damp, wrung out sponge. Any excess water will wash out the joint. But hey, one of the pros is that you can go back and touch it up. That's what's really great about it. You, you know, you can even the next day, if you see an area where your grout had kind of recessed or kind of didn't didn't work out, you can just scrape a little bit out and then just reapply some stuff that comes right out of the bucket. So you, you have plenty of time to, uh, you know, one, <laughs> one thing that uh, has happened a few times is I would finish my plumbing in in the in the sink and I would, I would spill a little bit of that purple primer and it would get onto the grout joint. Well, there's no getting purple primer out of any type of grout. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, that's, it's definitely going to stain. So with premix, it is nice. You can just scrape out that area and apply new premix, touch it up. Definitely 
one of the biggest best things about the pre-mix grouts is that you have it in the bucket and you can just keep touching it up and, and making it better or fix any of your your uh, your self-made problems i guess you could say uh and then the other con would be there's a little bit of a learning curve that's what i'm going to teach you today with it um because if you were doing regular traditional grouts this it's nothing like that uh it's really much much different and you really kind of have to be going within a technique that is going to keep you from um overworking the joint and obviously again water is its biggest enemy for sure all right so epoxy my favorite epoxies today um i probably use more Spectralock, oh, that's the regular Spectralock one. Spectralock Pro. So this is probably my favorite um, made by Laticrete again. Laticrete, I mean, they just really made a good product when it comes to grouts. I really, really a big fan of it. Um, but the Pro grout is probably the easiest uh, ones to use. And now this is a three-part system, A, B, and then the C powder part. Uh, but you can see that the price tag is just as unfriendly as the premix. So you're still looking at about a hundred bucks for your shower. And uh, we're going to go through the pros of that. The other one that I really like is um, Artex. Oh, I, you know what? I meant to do the Artex. I guess I have that um, Artex WA. So this is uh, epoxy grout, um, basically a two part system. They basically have the colorant in the mixture above and then you mix it into the box below. So this actually is like a two part system versus a three. Um, but this is a great epoxy as well. So there's a lot of great pros to epoxy. So number one, it's prepackaged. You're not messing up the mixture. You're able to, you know, as long as you get everything out of the package, you're gonna have the proper consistency. Uh, you're not, there's no human error when it comes to mixing it because it's all, you know, you're, you're just using the contents that it comes with. Does not need sealed, obviously the biggest reason of all, uh, but this is probably the most resistant to stains. Um, these are what commercial kitchens are going to use. I actually did a gang shower for, um, I can't remember what company, it was a chemical company uh, and their employees always had to take showers before they left for the day is kind of scary in itself so i don't know why but um anyways the shower got a lot a lot of use and the only thing that they wanted for grout was epoxy because of the chemicals that they used to clean these showers they needed something that wasn't going to cause a problem so epoxy was what they you know most of these commercial applications want because they know they can get it back to what it was and then chemicals really aren't going to cause a problem with it um, another absolute great uh, pro for epoxy is that it basically is an adhesive. So if you're using penny tiles, for instance, in a shower, I highly implore you to use epoxy grout because it's going to kind of make it all one cohesive piece of tile because it is it is an adhesive. Um, now, Laticrete is not necessarily considering themselves an adhesive, but Art XWA definitely does. And this is what I really love. Uh, sometimes I love using the Art XWA is if I'm getting really thin penny tile, that's usually what I'm having an issue with is penny tile for shower floors. Sometimes they're really, really thin. I mean, they're as like as thin as a, as a penny sometimes. Maybe not that thin, but they're pretty thin. And it's, you know, trying to thin set penny tile down and not and getting them out of the joints uh, can be really problematic, especially if they're only like an eighth inch thick. You don't have a heck of a lot of room there for grout to cover over any thin set layer that might be coming through. So... The best alternative is to buy the Artex WA to actually adhere the, the penny tile down to that floor. And then if, if anything comes up through the joints, who cares? It doesn't really matter. It does not matter because it's going to be the same color as what you put over top of it. Now, it is going to be expensive. you got to do use it as the adhesive and then epoxy it over. So you're talking about twice as much money to do this. But it is something that, you know, if you have something very delicate, uh, maybe even if you were doing like some really see-through uh, glass tile that might be a great way to, to, to do as well i actually did a shower floor not that long ago i don't have access to the footage but i did a um a pebble stone glass shower floor and i was really concerned about thin set being shown on the edges of the pebble stone glass and i was i was concerned that if there was any thin set that kind of touched the edges you would see it through the glass so what what i used was art xwa to set it 
and then it's all the same color and then I just grout over top of it. So that's a real big feature. Somebody asked me the other day about uh, what kind of grout they would use in a, in a shower where somebody had to use a wheelchair. If you're using smaller tile, epoxy is definitely a way to go. I know Weedy, I don't know if they do anymore, but Weedy used to recommend epoxy grout for anything smaller than two by twos so that you can get that adhesiveness. Um, you know, so it's, it really is uh, a real great benefit because it does pretty much act as its own adhesive. So real big uh, benefit there as well. Um, water does not really affect it. Um, now you can't have standing water in the grout joints or that could still cause a problem, but a real big pro, and this is why it's sometimes easier to actually grout with epoxy is that once you have it to the time limit of when you're going to remove it, which we'll get into here eventually, I've been talking for an hour, 45 minutes, even though I've only been on 45 minutes on here, but, <laughs> but anyways, the, um, you can use a lot of additional water to wipe down your surface. So you're not concerned about it washing out the joints like you do on almost every other type of grout. So that really makes it nice, makes it kind of somewhat foolproof to a certain extent. Um, and these can be used down to 16th inch grout joints. So kind of same thing as all these bigger, better um, um, grouts. It has a fine aggregate. Now I would have to say that epoxy, at least the Spectralock Pro is probably the finest grout compared to unsanded grout that, that's out there. Maybe there's gonna come out with something at some point here, but from what I can tell, the epoxy Spectralock Pro is probably the finest joint of any premix or any um, other type of grout other than unsanded traditional grout. So that's a real big benefit in my mind. And then the color consistency is great. Okay, so cons, expense. Obviously, $130 for a bucket of this is extremely expensive and can be very price prohibitive depending on how big your area is and what you're doing. So expense is definitely something to be considered here. Um, it's tough to apply. It does certainly has a tough consistency to it. You are going to be worn out. You're, 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 um, it takes a lot of elbow grease to pack this stuff. It has a sticky consistency to it. And that's really the hardest part about epoxy is actually filling the joints. Everything else about it is much easier. So just know that it is stickier. It is a little bit harder to get into all those joints. Um, haze can be really difficult to remove if you left it on there too long. I'm going to give you tips on that here shortly because that really makes a big difference um, with being able to remove the things effectively, doing it within the right time process. It's all about timing with most of this stuff. And the biggest con I would say to epoxy is touch-ups later. You don't have the choice. You don't have the ability to. If you find something the next day that you didn't fill, you're kind of shit out of luck. You got to buy a new a new smaller unit of the epoxy and patch that up. You're, you're just, unfortunately, there's no touch-ups later. So you have to be very cognitive and paying attention to what you're doing um, you know, to, to when you're, when you're installing this. Now you do have time after you do the washing and everything like that. I always recommend, and you'll see in my video here that I always recommend, you know, balling that up and having it, um, sit aside so that you can touch up later. But if you're talking about the next day and you see something that you didn't fill in properly, you pretty much have to buy a new kit and that could be very painful and expensive. So those are the pros and cons. I go also go into in here I, and I have that in my course as well. But again, this guide is totally free. Check it out down below. It has all those links in there below it. But uh, a good grout float makes a real world of difference. Uh, one of my favorites is this Troxel uh, grout float. This is pretty much what I use on a regular basis for all my grouts for the most part. Um, one of my used to go to ones was the Marshall town. This is another great grout float. Um, you know, but, uh, the Troxel is probably my favorite these days. Um, but get yourself a good grout float. You don't want to be using those cheap ones from Home Depot. They just don't work out all that well. Um, we'll get into this here shortly too, but, uh, Windex with vinegar, this is going to be important for the epoxy or premixes to do your final cleanup and get rid of any of that haze. Uh, and then I just have um, the other important thing is microfiber cloths. We're going to get into that shortly here as well. Microfiber cloths is one of those big key items in making sure that you have, um, you know, you don't get that hazing issue. So check it out. I spent a lot of time on that guide. Uh, I hope this was beneficial with you. Thanks for everyone being in here. Um, definitely a bigger crowd than when I was just talking to myself. So I'm glad to see that here. Uh, then we get to a couple questions and we'll get into the course details. 
Um, art expunges is worth 100%. You have to try it to see. I, I agree, CJ. Art expunges are definitely the way to go. Um, you won't see too many other... Honestly, you don't even see too many professionals on any of the social media sites using anything but the art X. Uh, I wish I could, you know... All I could say is just that the other ones just clog up quicker and you end up using more of those sponges and you can't hold the joint as nicely as those Ardex ones. It's just something about the way that they're manufactured that really works out great. Casey Hawk, I have a single level concrete slab that I believe has a drain that was tiled over during a remodel. Do you have any recommendations to locate it or am I stop calling a plumber? Boy, man, that really stinks. Ah, uh, boy. If it was covered over, man, I don't see how you're going to be able to find it other than trying to snake through the back end of it, which I don't know if it's going to be really possible for you. So sorry to hear about that, man. Um, obviously, if they tiled over a drain, it's probably going to be a hollow sound somewhere. But how you would be able to pinpoint that directly would be pretty dang possible, I think. Uh wasn't me. I used the standard yellow sponges and never had an issue. My grout jobs are impeccable every time, and for me, it's effortless. Good man, that's great. No, I hey, I'm not here to sell you anything. If you don't want to use any of that stuff, I'm just using what experiences I've had. And um, art sponges, I just to me, it's worth it. And now I don't spend twelve dollars for them. I, I'll admit that I don't. I don't order them off of Amazon because that's definitely a lot more expensive. But they do cost money. I mean, every job I'm probably spending thirty bucks on. Um, you know the uh on sponges so if that works great for you man i'm, I'm happy for you I'm, I'm sure your work is great uh what do you think about using a lock one on the bathroom floor in ladder creek pro for the shower gene that's my usually my go-to you'll see here in my course that's exactly what i do here i think that is a phenomenal way to go because um basically uh you know a lot of times the outside floor uh you know you're you're really hard on it you know you're doing the vanity work you're doing painting you're doing a whole bunch of other things and you know if you get paint on a grout joint sometimes that's almost impossible to come off too so you might want to scrape out that joint and reapply some new grout there i've had that issue before if it's not the purple primer it was me spilling paint on a grout joint and then so having the premixes for the floor was nice because you had the ability to touch it up and get it to be looking nice again. So I definitely highly recommend that. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, no, but at Ladder Creek Pro, I, I you know, you'll see in here, uh, we're going to have to go back here because I had already started this whole thing. Um, but sealing the stone. So, yeah, that's exactly what I did in this shower. Um, I did use the Spectralock one for the floor because I was doing two tones. So I was doing a beige on the travertine and then I was doing a white grout. Um, so, but Gene, I mean, if you're using an off color, I really do feel confident about you using um, the Spectralock one for everything. If you wanted to do two colors or whatever, I, I really do feel like they're great. I just, to me, again, it's just about the white grout. I'm still sensitive to it just because I've had issues over the years. And uh, someday I probably will use the Spectralock One White and see how it performs. But uh, for me right now, uh, my highest recommendation is still to use the epoxy for white. Everything else, Spectralock One at this point seems to be the way to go. I've been really, like I said, I've been very pleased with it. But sealing stone, you want to seal some of these tiles before you go grouting it. And stone, marble, anything like that that's that's one of those deals that you need to, the ceiling now ceiling is a very easy process and we'll get into it right here but i had a travertine border in the shower and then i had the shower floor that was um uh, also uh travertine as well so i needed to seal that before i grout okay so this is travertine our floor is travertine before you grout you want to be using some sealer and some of the stuff that i use um, when it comes to travertine, there's many different sealers. There can still be stuff that just actually just seals it and keeps it the way it looks, or you can get an enhancer, which will kind of darken it, kind of give it that kind of wet look, to bring out more of the beauty of the, the travertine. But it's all in preference. So I personally like the enhancing, um, which will bring out some of the colors. But what I like to use is this Mape Enhancing Plus. So you want to do this prior to grouting um they actually say 24 hours uh before you go ahead and start grouting no one does so that. you want to apply it on any surface 
like this travertine that you're going to be wanting to grout. So we're going to do this border, the shower floor, and the main floor. So we're just going to use a little mini roller to apply it. So just roll it across. It's not going to matter too much if it gets on the ceramic, that'll come right off. So apply it, let it sit there for about five minutes, and then wipe off the excess. Thanks, wasn't me. I appreciate you subbing. So we're just going to roll it on and let it sit for five minutes and then remove the excess. So pretty simple process, but it's important to do this if you want the grout to come off of the tile easily. That's the main reason is to be able to get the grout off of it. So sometimes the haze can really be tough to, to remove when you don't seal it. So travertine, eh, not usually too bad, but um, really where I have a, a problem with it is like any of that high gloss porcelain or um, high gloss marble, uh, stuff like that, 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 you know, that tends to have pores in it. And if you don't seal it, then that grout gets kind of gets stuck in there and then you can't remove it. But something like this with this travertine, um, which is just going to help, uh, prevent that from getting stuck on the surface. So as you can see, it's just a very simple process. I actually did call him a pay about using it because I've been using this, uh, stone and sealer enhancer, which I do have the links down in, in below here. And I think, I don't know if I have them on my guide, but in the course I do. Uh, but so there's two different types. There's the stone enhancer and then there's the ones that just, uh, kind of keeps it the, the dry look or the un, unwet look. And I was asking him, you know, what is your recommendation for when I seal this, when, when I can grout it? And they didn't have any real good answer for it. I actually called the, the one tech company. I was really disappointed uh, with their answers on it because they're very vague about it. Some of these companies are vague on some of these situations. Um, but, I mean, really their conclusion was seven days. I'm like, no one in their right mind is going to seal their travertine before uh, grouting and wait seven days to grout. I don't know anybody that does that. So, you know, um, maybe I need to be on search for a better sealer that has a better recommendation. But I've been using this stuff for years, never had an issue with it. I literally let it sit there for five minutes, wipe off the excess, and then, you know, almost an hour or two later. I, I want it to dry. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it to be all wet with the, um, you know, the actual sealer. But uh, you don't have to wait seven days. I mean, this, this is basically, this was done sometime around lunchtime and then I grouted before I left for the day. So a lot of times with the two tone grouts, I'll, uh, do one, one day and then, uh, the, the, the other color the next day it just seems to be easier that way because when you have the grouts kind of wet to each other, it kind of gets mixed up and whatnot. So Anyways, going down in my course, if you haven't seen my courses yet, um, you know, please, you know, you can support this channel by buying one of these courses. It's not very much money. It's only 40 bucks, but you'll get all these uh, additional information. And as I add more additional things to it as well. Um, but this, this is a quick video link that I have on my Salty. Day sealers. Those smell delicious. Sorry about Blue the Host here. makes it easy. Hopefully I didn't blow out your beer drums. Sorry, guys. I'm Dan here with Mopay, and welcome to another edition of MTI TV. Today, I'm honored to have a good friend of mine and our care and maintenance expert. That's here a three-minute video. Anyways, they have a great video on their sealers. I have that linked in here as well, and I'm not sure why I even clicked on that in the first place. Sorry about that. Um, but it, it does go through about the sealers and stuff. But the Mopay penetrating sealer, and then you have the enhancing um, heat sealer. So the penetrating... Um, you know, this doesn't, uh, it doesn't really enhance it, uh, whereas the enhancing sealer is going to give that darker look to it. So um, just know that the, the enhancing is going to darken it, kind of give it that wet look, and the penetrating is going to kind of keep it the way that it is. Um, I'm a bigger fan of the en en enhancing, but it's, it's all personal preference. Um, but basically all three of these are made by Mapay. You can find these readily, mostly available at, even at the box stores pretty easily. But you're just simply applying it with a roller or a, or a brush. You can use a brush as well. Uh, and then just wipe it down with a, a um, um, you know, microfiber cloth to get, to get it dry. Uh, but here I wanted to go over some of this high gloss porcelain tiles. This is, I think, is important, especially with the premixes and even the epoxies. Uh, 
I, you know, sometimes I've had some of the most trouble with the high gloss porcelain tiles like this. These were the cheap ones you get from Home Depot for whatever, $3 a square foot. Uh, but even high gloss porcelain or, or, you know, really glossy tile like this can be porous. And if you use some of those premixes in here on this, it, sometimes you can't not get it out. So just adding a grout release is really extra insurance. And in, in a lot of ways, you could grout release anything that you're using, and it would just be extra insurance from having any epoxy hazing. Now, again, most porcelains are not going to be an issue. It's only when it gets to these really high gloss types. That's when I just use this grout release. Okay, so when it comes to high gloss porcelain tile, I highly recommend that you use some grout release on your tiles before you start the grout. Even if you're using a traditional type of grout, I would really highly recommend it, and I really recommend it for premixes. Premixes have, are notorious for having some haze left over, and it can be very difficult. But today, I'm gonna to be using Spectralock Epoxy, but I wanna make sure I use the grout release because believe it or not, high, por high gloss porcelain like this is actually porous. And so you can get a lot of stuff um, basically stuck on here and it can be really difficult to remove the haze. So it's a real simple process and it's good insurance for an easy use. All I'm gonna use is just a standard roller here. Press this on. Make sure you have all the thin set off of your tile. Let it dry for about an hour and then you can go ahead and start grouting. So that's all there is to it. Extra insurance, definitely worthwhile, especially if you're using this high gloss porcelain. Um, so I have Laticrete. Uh, if you're gonna be using Spectralock Pro or Spectralock One, probably get the grout release that's made from them. They, they definitely test their own products. You'll probably have a better benefit from it, but I have the links here as well. And if you ever bought the course, you could always leave me a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to help you out with that. So, um, all right, so let's get into the grouting the border. This is using the, the um, and we're doing the floor as well with the Spectralock One. So again, one of the simplest types of grouts to use in my mind. And so we'll just get right into it here. Okay, so we're gonna move on the grouting. Um, this is gonna be a two-stage process because we're using two different colors. We're gonna be using, for the floor, we're gonna be doing a beige, and then for the border, we're doing a beige as well. And when you do two, two tones, you wanna have one fully cured before you start applying the second. So in this instance, I didn't get finished, or the, uh, the tile work still needs to set up for the white tile, so I'm gonna be doing the white grout tomorrow, but I wanna at least get the grout into this into this accent. And what I'm gonna be using for that is Spectralock One. This is a pre-mixed grout that doesn't need to be sealed. Um, it's stain resistant and uh, it really is some great stuff because uh, it has some crack resistance to it. And then, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't stain, it doesn't need sealed. There's like no maintenance with it. So we're gonna be using that for the colored portion. So we'll get through this and the floor and then tomorrow we'll do the white grout. Okay, so you don't even have to do anything to this. This is just that you don't have to mix it or anything. It's just ready to go. It's one of the things I really love about this grout because when I do this border and I do the white, I can go back and touch up with the, the, um, the pre-mix. When I use the epoxy, once I mix it, that's it. So it's nice that it's flexible and I can go back and touch things up. So this is really gonna be a simple process of just embedding it into the... take the audio off of there because I really don't feel like dealing with the copyright <laughs> so I just have a little bit of music on that but uh, yeah you can see that it, it definitely has kind of a thick consistency to it so it is a little um, you know time-consuming packing the joints but it's really not a difficult grout at all um, to use but when you're doing two tones you know if you're doing the white epoxy um, that's the main reason I'm using the white is because it is uh, a white grout. Uh, I'd probably go with the darker first and then use the lighter color later on. But it really, a lot of ways, you just have to make sure that you don't <laughs> mix the two grouts together. But that's where I like to do one the day before and then uh, the other type of grout the next day because we're going to be doing the floor as well in this same color. So that was only about five minutes to pack all of that. So then you could just take a really damp sponge and just wipe that all down. 
and it's really immediately rewarding too because you really get to see what that is going to look like and stay that way. A little bit with your sponge, just smoothing them out. So pay attention to those joints and then put a little bit more pressure where you need to. The music going. I'll just have it, have it muted. And this is an important part concept of this uh, using that microfiber cloth. This is going to keep that haze from building up. So that's a really helpful tip on the epoxy or uh, any of the premixes for that. It really makes a difference. I always like to use that linoleum knife. It's uh, scraping out the, you know, the joints where it's going to be white. Here I go on moving on to the floor. You have a little bit more time with shower floors because there's so much grout there, but again, you know, five minutes worth of spreading and you're like, oh, but most of the time you just do it all. And this is where if you didn't seal that shower floor, it can be difficult to remove the excess because it likes to stick itself into all those little cavities on the traffic. So this was kind of that Versailles pattern uh, travertine as well. You don't really see this too often. I like it. It's a nice tradition. And it really does make a big change to the whole color and the whole feel of it uh, once you crowd it. So and that's also what's nice about the premix. Um, yeah. uh, the premix is is that they they are what they are. So if the customer can get the sauce. Yeah, I know, Andrew. Why, why you told me to cut it just because of my copyright on it? <laughs> I'll be able to unmute it here. Yeah, just keep it. So they're, you're using that microfiber cloth right after you wipe it off. So um, special lock one, definitely something that I highly recommend uh, for a lot of these things. So in my course, I always just kind of go through uh, just the highlights so you don't have to watch the video again, but pack all those joints fully. I have uh, links to the, the floats that I like. Wipe off the excess with a sponge, making sure that it's not too much water. That's the biggest key. Uh, and then going over it with a microfiber cloth pretty much directly after that. So again, just always paying attention to your grout joints, looking at them, making sure that they're filled well and that they're smooth with the tile. And the great thing about the premix is you can just add a little bit more onto it immediately and then be able to, to fix anything that you missed. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, I have all my other links and stuff down here below. But we're going to get into the epoxy. So this is what I really hope that most of you are not afraid of doing. Uh, and that is using the epoxy because I think it is some of the best grouts out there. So we'll go through this. These are basically going to give you um, five major tips on uh, grouting with epoxy. Okay, so we're going to be doing epoxy white grout. I always recommend epoxy for doing white. Uh, main reason is, is in my experience, there's been a lot of problems with a lot of grouts in the white con color specifically. Um, there's grouts that if you that need constantly sealed, they end up getting stained because you're not doing the proper maintenance. To scratch that all together, I would not use a grout that needs sealed. There's no reason to in this um, day and age. There's a lot of advancements in grouting that require, you know, it's going to be completely sealed off and not allow any absorption of any type of stain. And that's what epoxy does. Epoxy is probably, you know, that's the premium grout I would consider 
It's what's used in commercial applications. Um, they would use it in commercial kitchens. So if it can withstand that, it's definitely going to be able to withstand um, you know, your shower daily use. So epoxy, I'm going to give you five recommendations on how to use this and do this the proper way so that you have an easy time of installing it. Okay, so my first recommendation is to get every bit of the part A and part B out of the packages. It's amazing how just one tablespoon difference can make a real difference with the mixture. So squeeze out every bit of the epoxy before, when you're mixing the A and B parts. And really the hardest part of doing any of this with the epoxy is actually packing the joints. So if you don't get everything out of those packages, it's gonna be a stiffer consistency. Okay, so definitely use a clean it's be harder. Um, mixer for this. You wanna be completely clean. You don't wanna be having any debris. You don't want thin set on the end of this or anything. So you just mix the A and B together really well. And then you just take your powder and you add it into that and mix it. You really should mix it for about two minutes too so that you can get the, the right consistency on it. Okay, so bring out a sponge and then just wipe over the surface that you're gonna start applying this epoxy grout. This helps glide the uh, the grout over the, the tile makes it a little bit easier to spread. And then one of my favorite grout um, floats is made by Trox. And this is made for urethanes and epoxy grouts. It's a little bit stiffer than a normal Marshall town. So it helps get it in to the joints a little bit easier. So once you've wiped down your surface, take some of your grout and then you're just going to pack it into the joints and then at a 45 degree angle remove it don't be too overly concerned about anything that's left on the surface it's really easy to to remove this once we get to the proper time frame here and i'm just going to be really careful around my border because i just want to fill all the white grout on the tile so yeah so it's a little it's a little bit thicker than probably most grouts um, and that's where making sure that you get every that part a and b out really makes a difference so i really think that the most of the work is actually just packing the joints everything else is pretty simple after that So yeah, I mean, and again, don't really pay attention to what you're packing and just taking a look at those joints and make sure that they're fully packed because that's going to be the problematic part if you don't do that. So don't be overly concerned about the excess that's on the tile. Uh, I really would think that, you know, make that the secondary issue in your mind uh, of scraping off that excess because that's not a big deal. It's really making sure that those joints are fully packed so that you can tool them and make them nice and smooth with the tile. And that's what's a little bit different about epoxy for sure. I mean, you know, a lot of other grouts, you're more concerned about everything. You don't want to leave too much on the tile. And, um, you know, so this is very flexible for that matter. So, but typically, even if this was subway tile or anything like that, you could pretty much, this is basically a three by four shower for, for the most part. You could pretty much do the entire thing with a, um, you know, I bought the nine pound unit for this one, which is the bigger unit. But if you, this is your first time, you might want to buy the smaller kits and just do one wall at a time. Um, well, you really, you're only going to get two kits. You probably only need two kits. Good. Okay. My second recommendation is after you set all the grout, make a big grout ball out of the left what you have left of the epoxy this way you can touch things up after you start cleaning things up otherwise it'll get all hardened in the bucket and you won't be able to use it and again that's your biggest con to epoxy is that you don't have the ability to come back tomorrow and touch anything up like with the premixes so make sure you ball that up so that when you're when you're cleaning everything 20 minutes later then you can 
touch things up as you're there, but you really have to pay attention to those grout joints because you don't get a second shot or you're spending a lot more money to mix another section of it. So you can see all the excess I have on that tile. It's not beautiful. It's definitely, there's a lot of grout left. Okay, so on. number three is timing. This is a real big key with epoxy. You need to basically remove the excess epoxy at the right time. So the best way to do that is just to press on the joint and if you can mold it and not get anything off of your finger then it's ready to go so in this instance it took about half an hour because it's so humid and now we're ready to scrub so always have two buckets of water ready to go and you want to use one of these scrub pads and you're basically just using circular motions this is actually a really easy grout to clean up because you can use as much water as you want and you don't have to worry about the joints uh, washing out like a lot of other grouts do. So you just scrub it and then take your sponge and wipe it down. And then you can hold the joint with the sponge. So with the sponge, you're kind of making that joint nice and smooth. And then my fourth tip is to use microfiber cloth wipe down that area that you just finished because that's going to lim eliminate any epoxy from the haze from forming on your tile so if you let that dry you'll just see a whole bunch of blotches of epoxy so if you go over it with a microfiber cloth it'll remove all of that and now get about 80 percent of that haze off of there and then i'll show you here a little bit later an hour or two later you can go over it with some windex with vinegar but um yeah i mean and again i did that border the night before and the shower floor the night before uh so that's why you're able to scrub over that and not have any of those joints get ruined um so but yeah, it's really important to know when you're going to actually start addressing and working on this. And again, that finger test, just putting your dry finger on a joint. And if you're able to pull out the grout, then you want to wait a little bit longer. You want to be able to mold it and like press on it and not get a whole bunch of residue. Okay, so my finger. final tip is to use some Windex vinegar with vinegar just to clear stuff a couple hours later and use your microfiber claws to so, clean it up. This will get the last bit of haze off of your tile yep so just buff that out and then just look at the different areas of the light to see if you have all that haze off and you could use a scrubby pad too i mean that's not a bad idea to use that scrubby pad with the windex but you know if you're a contractor doing this don't just walk away from after you first clean this grout for the day you know you're going to want to do something else there and a couple hours later come back with this windex because this is your best shot of getting rid of any of that haze. You don't want to have to deal with this later. Now, they do make um, some haze remover that is a little bit more, um, you know, basically more aggressive, but you really don't want to even have to get there. You're better off just to wait a couple hours after you did the initial wash, use that Windex with vinegar and get, get rid of that. So, um, but what I was going to state is that if you never used epoxy before and you're very timid and you're, and you're concerned about using this stuff, then get the two and a half pound kit and, and do the back wall. So it's, it's like basically, I mean, you will probably with a shower like that, a three by four shower, you could probably just get two kits to do this. Um, but you know, it's going to be kind of a problematic area of when to stop with having three walls. So, you know, um, it's basically about a hundred bucks for the Spectralock nine pound unit, and then you're you're, you're ninety bucks at, at just two of these smaller kits. So, you know, I don't know. It's it's a tough one. I, I really do feel though that um, you're not going to have much of an issue unless you have a very hot, dry area where you're going to have a hard time getting that grout off of there. They're usually the dry hot areas is what makes it the most um, difficult environment for grouting. Um, but all in all, it's usually very, very forgiving because you can use those scrubby pads with as much water as you want and getting those, those joints told. So again, don't be afraid of epoxy. It really is fairly, uh, simple. 
uh, just be sure that you use that full part A and B. You know, go through this list again before you get started. You don't have to watch that whole video over again. You can just go into my images I have here and I highlight the most important parts of it. So mixing the A and B and C thoroughly, getting every bit out of those packages makes a real difference with the consistency of it, makes it a little bit easier to pack all those joints. Um, and then setting the grout, you wanna wipe it everything down with a, a damp sponge and then go ahead and apply it with a good grout float. I really recommend these Troxel grout floats. So check out uh, my Amazon for those, uh, Amazon store for that. And for all those that don't know, I do live streams on Amazon Live as well too, and I get into more depth on some of these tools and different products. So, you know, be sure to join me over there if you ever, uh, if you can. It definitely helps me support this channel as well uh, to be able to to be able to have a following over there and and, and highlight some of these products that uh, have been really helpful for me over the years. Um, pay attention to those full packing of joints. That's the most important. That's all you're really mainly concentrating on at this point. Don't worry about the excess. I know it's some people that just can't get over the fact that everything's messy, but just leave. Don't don't be overly concerned about it. Get the joints packed, and then if you want to scrape things off a little bit later, that's fine, but you're not going to have a problem with using a white scrubby pad and getting any of that excess off. It's, it's going to be very easy to come off of there. Uh, some of these niches can be some of the biggest pain in the necks to do. So if you have a recessed niche, using a margin trowel uh, will help you get that packed in there very well. And then again, uh, the biggest con of epoxy is that you don't have the ability to touch up the next day. So make sure you ball up that grout so that you can touch it up the same day that you're actually doing the grouting. And then uh, clean up uh, any excess off the shower floor. I'm not really sure why I have that in there, but that should be kind of a no brainer. Uh, but then later on, uh, clean up. Uh, so after 10 minutes, usually I would, I would check every 10 minutes, put it that way. So once you're done grouting everything, um, do a finger test. If you get any grout, if too excess of grout coming off of your finger and you're pulling it out of the joint, then it's too early. Wait another 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, and then check it again. Uh, you really want to be able to just mold it. You don't want to uh, be pulling the grout off of the joint. Use a white scrubby pad to scrub everything. And again, you can see how much excess water I was using on that. That's one of the great benefits of using um, epoxy grout. The water just does not affect those grout joints the same way it does on every traditional type of grout. Ardex sponges, you know, I mean, we, we had this debate earlier on here about that. I, I really feel buying an Ardex sponge is, is really the way to go. I don't know exactly why they work so much better, but they do than any of those traditional big box store ones. Usually I go through multiple sponges at the box stores compared to just using one or two of these for a shower. Microfiber cloth is the biggest point here to remove any of that haze. And then again, you wanna stick around a couple hours later for the final wash and using the Windex. Uh, with vinegar. Vinegar is the key here. You could probably just add vinegar to water if you wanted to, uh, but the vinegar portion of this is what really gets any of that haze off there. That's when you're going to want to do this is a couple hours later. You really don't want to have to go to the aggressive route, which I do have um, links down here below that will help you with the more aggressive. So epoxy haze remover is something that you can use the next day. Um, so this is, uh, this is Laticrete Stone Tech Grout Haze Remover. Um, this is something that you would uh, use the following day with a scrub brush if you couldn't get that to be um, removed. So, and then again, I mean, we went through the guide. Make sure you pick up that guide down below. But uh, the other major fi favorite epoxies that I really like is this um, Art XWA. Uh, this, you know, for many reasons I've already highlighted in previous um, comments on this live stream. So um, with that, let me see. I think that's it for the epoxy. Yeah, that is it for the epoxy. If you ever have any questions, uh, if you're part of this course, if you want to support the channel, buying a course is definitely one way to do it. Uh, and you can you know, always reach out to me. I'm always looking for feedback uh, because that's just going to make me have a better um, create a better course for that matter. Check out my website. Been putting a lot of work into that as well. So I've got a lot of free materials there as well um, that uh, can help you out on the plan page. A lot of different guides. You know, I've got so many windows open up here. i got to cancel out some of these things. Uh, but I wanted to show you one checklist I also have in the description below here. Uh, so these are just going over those five key points of epoxy. 
it has the video i do have this on my youtube channel as well in addition to this live stream um, but then i have all the different links down below here about where to get this stuff so you can in the description of this video get this guide as well and then you have links to be able to get to my course and everything else with that so uh, Jamar one, thank you. I hope I can get back to your videos later. Great, man. Yeah. So getting back to where where I'm at here on YouTube. So let me just go to my YouTube channel. And so if you go to playlists here and you go under uh, towel walk and shower course, online course, that's what I have it underneath here. You can follow along with all the other uh, courses here. Or, or the other parts of this course. So I really wanted this to be something that um, everybody has access to, whether you, you buy into the course or not. So that's really, you know, my goal is to simplify bathroom modeling. And, you know, really, I really feel like the course is going to be just, if you're really doing this for a serious project or job or, or you're in your own home, the course is going to keep you more focused. And then, um, you know, just YouTube is so distracting. I'm sure all of you are on here now probably getting – different uh things from other creators and you probably won't even stay on here for more than 20 minutes so you know i get it i'm the same way so if you get off of youtube off of social media and you have a platform that you can actually uh learn things on it it does tend to keep your focus there and keep you organized and that's what my my courses in this whole platform is it really about is to, to to help with that so um all right so i've been on here for two and a half hours i know it's only been about an hour on this live stream that's because I was talking to myself for an hour because I screwed up uh, going live on there. But um, yeah, happy Easter, uh, Gilbert. Thanks for thanks for watching. Uh, from Africa, that's pretty cool, man. I haven't heard about anybody tell me that they're from Africa watching this. That's one great thing about YouTube and social media and all this stuff. You get to talk to people all over the world. I'm, I'm hoping someday I can come out to Africa. I'd love to check out the place. I've always uh, one of my bucket list places to go. Uh, so... But anyways, thanks so much for joining. Give me a like on this video and uh, subscribe so that you can get uh, the next notification on the next live stream. Check, and again, check out my Amazon store. It's in the link description below there. I'm doing live streams on that probably every week as well. So you can always find me on these live streams to uh, answer any questions that you may have. So, all right, guys, have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon.